Hey everybody, PCB Junkie here. So today we've got one of these, and we've got one of these. Okay. Huh? Well, okay, if you haven't guessed, we're building an arcade monitor. So a little bit of a story to this. I ended up uh, picking up, I think, six arcade cabinets recently. Uh, they're all kind of projects. Uh, one was pretty good, another one is pretty decent, but uh, they're not all perfect. Uh, they're gonna need a little bit of work. So one of these uh, is a former Atari, Atari Centipede, I believe, which was converted to a generic new game with a new game marquee and a kind of a bland Japanese shooter. Which is actually not too bad, to be honest with you. I, I don't even uh, remember the, the name, but it's it's not a common game. And uh, yeah, it's all right. It's a helicopter game. Pretty decent. Um, I'm going to keep it. Anyway, uh, so that cabinet, uh, since it's a centipede, it only came with a 20-inch uh, monitor. And that monitor is kind of, uh, well, it, it's, not, it's not doing the, the greatest. Uh, it's going to have to be recapped. Uh, and since it's... Uh, this is a generic cabinet, it's just a centipede that's never going to be a centipede again. I'm going to make sure of it this time. So we're going to basically convert this cabinet to one that has a bigger monitor. Alright, so that is the plan. We're going to hook this guy up here to this TV and we're going to try to make that happen. Now, there's a bit of uh, information here about this TV. So this is a very recent... RCA and when I mean uh, recent it's like a 2001 but uh, the best thing about this TV was that I actually found two of them and they were still new in the box so yeah recently I was just browsing some ads and I found this particular TV and the other one They're the exact same model in the box have all their accessories and uh, I think they're gonna be easily modded to uh, RGB so I may do that in the second video. I may uh, convert this one to an arcade monitor and do something um, a Little bit more interesting with the other one just so it uh, it stays the TV instead of being taken apart into little bits But yeah, that is the plan. So we're gonna take this guy here. We're gonna open it up and uh, We're gonna make sure first that this chassis is compatible. I have a feeling it's not gonna be but uh, Well, you'll you'll see why soon you know, when you get stuff like this uh, and look at the instructions or the packaging provided, you know exactly what you're in for. I'm not even going to say anything here, but just have a look at this. And which one is it that I have? Well, I guess it's up to you to figure it out. Crazy. All right, here's the back of the uh, TV. This is the uh, cover. I took the cover off already. Now the TV's been manufactured in May of 2001. The model number is uh, F25305. This is an RCA 25 inch model. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's in very good shape. And uh, looking inside, I can tell this is a fairly new design there's a whole bunch of uh, ICs there more than uh, I guess the typical TV of that age and uh, yeah I think uh, there's a little bit of stuff going on here the design is very nice and clean but I would say the most impressive thing here is the size of the tube or maybe I should say the the depth of the tube for its size it's uh, it's pretty shallow. I'm kind of surprised that they would make a TV this shallow at that price range. I'm assuming this is like a kind of an entry level model. It's uh, nothing really special. There, there are literally no inputs on the back, with the exception of this G-Link. Uh, so this is obviously not like a high-end consumer model. This is something pretty pretty inexpensive but yeah have a look at the uh, yoke here look at the thickness of these wires and there there aren't too many windings too so 
you know that tells me this is going to be like a high current yoke and uh, that's the reason why I believe the uh, universal chassis is not going to work on it okay but before we conclude that we'll obviously have to do a little bit of measuring here and make sure that uh, that this really may be the case and uh, if it is well it just makes our project a little bit more interesting isn't it uh, we're going to be able to hopefully modify this chassis if it isn't uh, good enough for this yoke and uh, that may be the other approach for this video so I'm uh, pretty confident we'll get to make this work eventually but uh, it may not be right off the bat so anyway let me uh, get the multimeter out and uh, we're gonna measure the yoke we're gonna look at the specifications here of this chassis and then we will go from there I got the LCR meter hooked up to the yoke inputs and as you can see here for the horizontal one we have 1.48 ohms and if we check inductance we are getting 1273 micro henrys now these guys here that manufactured this chassis they didn't bother to put in any instructions or any sort of specifications I mean there's literally nothing on the box or in the box so what I had to do is I had to go online and see if I can find something about this particular chassis and uh, I've been able to find a little bit of information here uh, this particular one states that uh, the vertical resistance the resistance of the vertical yoke coil should be 6 to 12 ohms 6 being the minimum and 12 being the maximum and uh, for the horizontal we need 1.3 ohms to 2.5 ohms and as you saw the resistance here was 1.4 so we are technically within range uh, which is surprising I was uh, not expecting this but um, you know 1.3 is, is kind of low so uh, so I guess I guess we're okay we're within the limits so now let's now try the vertical okay get in there all right so the vertical is 4.1 ohms and nine point eight millihenries okay so okay so that's um, 9.8 millihenries that's actually quite uh, quite high okay so but on the other hand the resistance here is only 4.1 and this thing is expecting 6 so I'm not sure all right you know what um, I'm gonna connect it anyway and I'm gonna see what happens I hope we don't let any smoke out but um, well it, it may just happen so the old chassis is now on the floor I disconnected it it was uh, pretty easy actually and uh, the new chassis as you can see is already connected more or less and I made some crimped connectors for the yoke just in case I need to flip the polarity and uh, you know flip the screen upside down left to right or whatever and as far as my first impression of the chassis, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it looks good. I mean, um, a lot of knobs for different adjustments. Well, uh, you know, most of the names that you see there are in Chinese, but if you look closely behind that knob, you'll be able to see that we do have the English names as well, kind of hiding. You may not be able to see it unless you really look below, below those knobs. So, chassis looks okay a uh, couple of negatives here I guess every everything looks kind of flimsy I mean look at that power cord it's just uh, it's scary to be honest with with you and uh, you know look look at the yoke connector the red wire and the blue wire are both for the horizontal but look at the blue it's just like half the the gauge of the red one for some reason I don't know 
yeah you know this is the Chinese cheapo quality can't expect much more but uh, yeah this is uh, this is pretty much it and went went on pretty easy I had no trouble connecting it and uh, I'm ready to power it on now and see what happens now if I were a betting man I'd say this thing's gonna smoke uh, that vertical resistance was just way too low but on the other hand I believe that the inductance is, is high enough and may in fact uh, be the right match for this so you know I mean uh, who knows maybe what I need to do first before I just sacrifice it immediately maybe I should put a couple of resistors in series with that uh, yoke coil and see what happens see if we if we get a picture at all this way we'll know if it's uh, if it smokes because it's DOA or if it smokes because the resistance is just simply way too low I went ahead and uh, I put in those series resistors after all got two of them in there to spread the pain a little bit uh, I think the amperage uh, it's gonna be quite high uh, they may not even be adequate I mean they're 5 watt 1 ohm resistors but they may get pretty warm so yeah I think uh, I think we're ready to fire this thing up and see what happens now I'm wondering if I should look at the back or the front uh, I think we should probably look at the back there's only one chance of this if it smokes I need to know where it's coming from okay let's make it happen I got the transformer isolation transformer attached it's already plugged in I'm ready to throw the switch all right here we go let's see if, let's see if she pops I heard the high voltage don't see anything on the screen but uh, I believe the TV is on let's see if there's any glow I believe there is, yeah. Okay. Maybe this is okay. I don't see any smoke from the resistors, but I also don't see any picture at all. Okay, you know what? Let me get uh, some sort of a signal generator and we'll hook it up and see, see exactly what we're getting here on the screen. It may just be that there's no signal, so the screen ends up staying dark to get something on the screen here I hooked up these probes to my arcade monitor tester this is a, a device that I developed a few months back uh, been working on monitors recently and I I think uh, something like this is a, a very useful tool now mind you this is a shameless plug if you if you're interested in getting one of these uh, you can visit my website again the link is going to be in the description but yeah it's a it's a battery operated uh, little tester that outputs uh, various tests to the arcade monitor and uh, this one supports uh, was it three tests I think uh, three or four tests and uh, at these modes here the standard medium res and high res arcade resolutions so we're going to be using that thing and we're going to power this monitor on once again we'll turn this thing on and, and see what kind of picture we get on the screen all right so let's do that here's the power this thing definitely came on I heard it okay so let's turn this little guy on oh definitely hearing something let's see oh yeah all right so the vertical definitely isn't right. I mean, this thing is supposed to stretch all the way up to the top. So those resistors definitely aren't helping. Okay, let's have a look at another test here. Uh, the resolution is correct. It is the 15 kilohertz resolution. So we'll we'll try a different test on here. Let's see. Okay, so this is the checkerboard pattern. You can use this to check for conversion or making sure that uh, you know the screen is uh, set up with the correct geometry and 
the I mean it looks okay you know the sides may have a little bit of pincushion there but um, you know vertical is definitely off but besides that I think uh, I think this is looking all right colors may be off a little bit too we may need to tweak the colors a little let's see next test is oh okay this is supposed to be the burn-in test it's supposed to show you oh something definitely stinks I think it's those resistors. I can see some smoke. Hmm. Well, don't really see anything. But, uh, you know what, let me, I definitely smell something. Okay, let me turn this thing off and then I'm gonna poke around with my finger see if I can find the source of the problem first thing to check actually they're really cold all the heat sinks are cold ooh damn this guy's hot what 25 watt resistor and it's still that hot that is ridiculous must be the power supply section hmm oh, this, this heat sink seems okay well I'm not sure uh, this may actually be okay so you know what I'm gonna remove one of those resistors now and I will see if uh, we get the screen to come up a little bit larger and then uh, I guess the last step will be to remove both of them and, and see if we blow this thing. But uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Seeing how the screen wasn't stretched out all the way, um, it may still be okay here. I removed one of those resistors and plugged the cable directly into the yoke connector. And I have the tester running once again and we're going to power this monitor up and see how much of an improvement this made to the vertical. Honestly, uh, I'm not sure it made much of an improvement. I think the pin cushion issue is still there. Let me see here. I'll try the different test and try the checkerboard. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's any bigger than before. I think that's probably the same size. So, you know, I don't know if, uh, if we have any other option but to remove that resistor and see if uh, this thing is stable with that uh, that yoke. So as you can see now, I removed both of the resistors. We've got the wires attached directly to the yoke now. We're going to turn on our tester and. We're gonna try this one last time. Hopefully, this thing doesn't blow. It's definitely on. I can hear it running. No smoke. Tester's doing okay. But, nothing on the screen. Something to do with the tester or okay, I figured it out. It's just a loose ground wire in one of the probes. Okay, let's uh let me show you what I was able to find out so far. So now we have a an image and more or less adjusted it. There, there are a couple issues. Let me show you. Uh, one of the issues here that I found. If I increase the high voltage to the CRT, the screen improves, the brightness goes up, but it develops these humps on the left side. And uh, if I turn it down, the screen becomes too dark, and then that fixes the geometry. So 
I'm not sure. I'm going to mess around with this some more. So that's one of the issues. And the other is the vertical size. Okay, so here's the knob for vertical size. If I go a little bit higher than like this, it starts to starts to bend. Okay, so I think the driver is just not capable of pulling that pulling that raster all the way up to the top. But uh, yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and mess around with some more, and hopefully we we get something better than this. But uh, so far, I have to say I'm not impressed. There's a bunch of issues here. That corner needs to be degaussed. Of course, this thing has no degaussing coil. And the colors don't look right and uh, the geometry screwed up so I think uh, this is gonna be a little bit more work than I initially anticipated but uh, well, at least at least it didn't blow so gotta look on the bright side right anyway let me uh, go mess around a bit and hopefully I come back with something better all right I've been messing around with this thing for probably an hour or so and I think I'm getting the hang of it I think I understand what needs to be done in order to adjust this and uh, well I'm gonna go uh, and try to describe it for you right now so the first thing you'd want to do is um, if you have a some sort of a signal generator TV generator or if you have a an arcade game with a convergence test which is a series of lines in a grid or perhaps a checkerboard like this you, well you, you need to pull that up and uh, you need to adjust the high voltage and uh, I don't know why high voltage makes such a difference, but uh, yeah, for sure, this is uh, this is going to be your first step. So, uh, as you can see, this is supposed to be a checker board pattern. It certainly doesn't look like one, does it? Well, let me show you what uh, the high voltage adjustment on the flyback makes it look like after you adjust it. All right, so we go ahead and I'm going to turn that high voltage knob, and uh, as you can see, when you start adjusting it you actually get a proper checkerboard pattern. Of course, if you go to f too far, you get this, right? So you get, the background is too bright and the checkerboard is kind of muddled. So I think you want to go ahead and find a place where you get the best contrast. And I would say this is probably it. So the edges are nice and sharp. Yeah, and, uh, and that's where you want to leave it, okay? So that's going to be your first step. The next thing you'd want to do is uh, try to make this checkerboard pattern or your convergence pattern geometrically uniform across the screen and also uh, try to make it fit on the screen. So we're going we're gonna to mess around with the horizontal, um, horizontal size and get it to come in a little bit towards the center. Okay, and then... Uh, I think this is the pin cushion, so we're going to stretch it out at the edges. Not sure if this is clear, but uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'm going to move the screen up and down a little bit, make sure this this image is more or less centered. And uh, yeah, I think this is okay. Maybe uh, horizontal uh, size is a little bit too big. Let's, uh, let's shrink that a little bit. Okay, I think I think this should do it. Okay, so that screen looks pretty good, geometrically speaking. And uh, now we're gonna look at the colors. All right, so to adjust the colors, uh, you're gonna want some sort of a source. Uh, where it's going to be easy to understand, uh, you know, what colors you're expecting to see on the screen. So ideally, of course, this would be a, a TV uh, signal generator of some sort, like what we're using here, or uh, perhaps an arcade game with uh, with this type of test in the uh, uh, test functions. I don't know if using a game, uh, just a regular game, will be effective. Uh, you, you probably can get it pretty close, but uh, 
I mean, will you be able to get the colors perfect? Uh, it's uh, that's debatable. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you know if you're gonna get a chassis like this, you should probably have a game picked out already that has a, a test that you can use. But anyway, enough uh, enough of the rambling. Let's get right into it. Uh, we're gonna basically uh, now go ahead and try to get the colors to uh, look proper on the screen and. Uh, I think the best uh, method of doing this that I found was to uh, start with the gain. So there are uh, three knobs on this chassis for gain, color gain right there. So we got the green, red and blue and then we have the uh, blue, red and green cutoff here. So let's start with these here and uh, what we're expecting to see basically here is uh, a distinct set of colors. So this, this tester only has uh, three levels of each RGB and then uh, white is just a combined uh, uh, combined each one of these together to give you the, the white. So let's start to adjust each one individually. We'll start with the red and then we can see uh, whether we can get this to adjust properly. So I think that is the green. Okay, so uh, let me find the. Is that the blue? That is the blue. Okay, so let's start with the red. Okay, that is something else. I think that would be the brightness. Okay. Okay, crank the brightness up a little bit. Okay, this must be the red. Yeah, there it is. So what we're gonna basically do is to try to get the red to show the three distinct colors. And I think, uh, I think that looks pretty good. Green looks okay as well. That's the brightness again. Yeah, I'm doing this with one hand, obviously, and I can't, I can't even look at the back and, and the position that I'm in. So it's a little bit difficult. I'm sure you understand. All right, is that okay? Uh, it kind of is. I think that's that's okay for now. Now the next thing would be to uh, go after the cutoff. So. As you can see here, the red is is really just oversaturated, and um, also if you look down there, you will see that the white just has a little bit of a, of a red hue to it. So I'm going to now play around with the red cutoff and try to make this look a little bit better. Okay, so I almost got rid of all of the red in the white bar and made the red up on top look a little bit better. All right, so let's uh, now do the same thing for the blue. You can see a little bit of the blue hue in the white. So we're gonna modify the blue cutoff to get rid of all that. And I think that looks pretty good. Blue is looking good. And uh, that is about it I think I'm just gonna go back a little bit and mess around with the red gain a little bit I got the wrong knob again and try to make it a little bit better I think I think that's okay now that obviously had an effect on the the smearing there so again I'm gonna go back to the cutoff and I'm going to get rid of that right there and that take care of this one as well and I'm gonna say that looks pretty darn close to what it should be bit of blue down here uh, 
I'd say that's pretty damn close. Now, the problem here with the, the purple, that's not actually an issue. Uh, that's just a, a problem with that corner um, needing to be degaussed. Well, we'll take care of that later. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, color adjustment. I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that. That doesn't look too bad. So uh, I think the next issue we're going to tackle now is to stretch the vertical out as much as we possibly can. So uh, I'm going to show you exactly what I think needs to be done and uh, we'll come back and, and try, try to make that happen. As far as the vertical size is concerned in this chassis we have one integrated circuit right there that is uh, responsible for most of the work in terms of uh, driving the vertical section of the yoke. Uh, it has the uh, output transistor that uh, provides the appropriate uh, amperage and uh, it only receives uh, the timing signals from the rest of the monitor for synchronization but uh, with the the few passive components that are around it it's it's mainly responsible for for doing all that work so as we know we've maxed out on the adjustments uh, when we cranked up the vertical size it uh, doesn't allow us to stretch the screen all the way to the top and the bottom so really we're kind of stuck and uh, I think the only way to uh, get over this is to replace that IC with something a little bit more beefy so uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up ordering a bunch of these these are super cheap I think these are like uh, literally 10 15 cents each now these guys are one step up from that one so that one is meant for small to medium sized TVs and these are meant for medium to large size. So my hope is that uh, we'll be able to replace this thing with one of these and uh, maybe, maybe we'll have to look at some of the passive parts around in the circuit but uh, I'm just hoping that uh, replacing one of these uh, is going to be enough to get the additional amperage to be able to stretch that vertical out all the way. So that is the plan and uh, let me now jump to the data sheet and I'll show you exactly what the differences are and then uh, we'll go from there. So the, uh, the two integrated circuits for vertical deflection are right here. The one on the left came from the chassis. I already uh, desoldered it. And the one that's on the right is the one that I ordered uh, from the package that I showed you. The one on the left is an LA7840 and the one on the right is a 7841. All right, so let's have a look at the data sheet and uh, I'll show you exactly what the what the differences are right here. So this is the uh, 7840 data sheet. And if you read the last uh, three lines of the overview, you will see that uh, the maximum deflection current for this particular chip is 1.8 amps peak to peak. And uh, it has been suited, it's been designed for small and medium size screen sets now if we look at the 7841 data sheet and uh, look at the, the same paragraph we'll see that the maximum deflection current is 2.2 amps peak to peak and that it, it has been designed for large screen sets and uh, these are the application notes uh, sample application circuit for both 7841 is up here 7840 is down here and uh, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this very well, but uh, yeah, they both uh, are the exact same circuit, uh, same, uh, same parts, same ratings, uh, same circuit. So that, uh, that should be uh, pretty clear that uh, it's, it's the IC doing all of the work and uh, replacing it should be enough. But of course, you know, as with everything else, we'll have to put that theory to the test. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace that IC and then we'll jump back to the chassis and uh, let's see where that takes us. All right, I got the new chip in there and uh, I think uh, everything is back together again. 
Let's turn on the tester and we're gonna power this thing up and see what we get. Okay, so fingers crossed, hopefully it doesn't smoke. And uh, is this thing plugged in? Yes, it is. Okay, here we go. Okay, you know what? It's not plugged in. Uh, of course not. All right, here we go. Okay. So far, so good. No smoke. I hear the high voltage. Uh, let's see. Is it better? Huh. Tough to say. Let's try the other test. Uh, oops. Uh, well, it, it goes down further for sure. The top maybe not so much, but uh, let's see if we can stretch this out a little bit. Now where's the vertical? Uh, vertical size right here. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Ooh. Well, I think that worked just the way we expected it to. Okay, so that pretty much does it. I'm pretty happy with the result. The mod was pretty easy. Now I'm gonna take the tube out of this thing and uh, I'm going to install it in the new cabinet and then we'll test it out with a game and see, see what it looks like running an actual game. So far so good. All right, here's the centipede that I was talking about. Uh, so this cabinet is actually in fairly decent shape. I already painted the sides. Uh, the front is pretty much as it was. It's extremely filthy. I took off the glass and the monitor is having a fit at the moment. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, it was working okay earlier. Yep, there it is. So, I'm going to say that this particular CRT right here, this 20 inch, is a little bit too small for a vertical cabinet that I intend to use for shoot 'em ups. So I'm going to toss this bezel out and I'm going to take this monitor out and uh, I'm going to replace it with the universal chassis with the 25 inch. Hopefully everything fits. I'm going to do a little bit of a mock-up right now and I'm going to try to see if, uh, if I can squeeze that tube in there and then we'll go from there. The old chassis is now out. Got the mock-up installed. It's just a bit of cardboard that I cut out around the tube. Doing the old measure twice, cut once routine. And uh, yeah, looks like it's going to fit quite nicely i mean it's not perfect right there there are a couple of areas like uh, up there which uh, which you're not going to be able to see because of the crappy lighting in here but the see the thickness of the wood behind it uh this is like the structural part that holds the cabinet together so i'm gonna have to cut into that a little bit no big deal everything should still be pretty good once i put the two back in but yeah it's uh, it's gonna fill in this cabinet quite nicely I I think uh, with the new tube it's uh, it's gonna be exactly the the ideal size for a vertical shooter cab so that's the next step I'm gonna mark everything and uh, I'm gonna start cutting oops uh oh uh, crappy tape and here we are Cut out the hole, got the tube installed. I have to say, tube fits quite nicely. I mean, it's uh, it filled it in all the way to the edge, uh, barely an inch to spare. Now you can't see it over there because the lighting is not so great here, but uh, if I got anything bigger, it wouldn't have fit for sure. So, got the uh, chassis installed in the back. I'll show you that in a second, but uh, I'm ready to power this thing on now. So. Let's see what we get. All right, here we go. Okay. Plugged it in. Let's see what happens.
Absolutely nothing. Okay. Let's check the back. Make sure we have power. Uh, is there a glow on the neck? I cannot see. I think there is. Yep. Okay, I got the chassis installed. Not sure if the game is running or not. Hmm. Okay, gonna have to come back. Try to figure this out. All right, I finally got it working. So the issue was that uh, the high voltage cap uh, came off and it was literally dangling a centimeter away from the rest of the chassis. So <laughs> not a good start, but now that this thing is up and running, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it's looking pretty sharp. The colors are wrong, yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and adjust a few more things. But you know, for the time being, I just wanted to see how this thing performs with the game, and uh, it's not too bad at all. Uh, one complaint, a pretty big one actually for shooters, uh, is maybe a, a bit of an issue. Whenever there's a big explosion on the screen, uh, we seem to have a little bit of a blooming artifact. Uh, you'll be able to see this, uh, the screen will literally warp. Uh, horizontally so just uh, yeah I don't know if you can see that but that, that's pretty annoying I don't know and this shooter seems to be doing that a lot so uh, yeah not sure what to do there maybe uh, some high voltage adjustments will take care of that but uh, yeah besides that I think I'm I'm okay with the end result uh, given you know the price and the effort that this took I think this is a bit of a success right here so Finally, this cab is worthy of this marquee right here. All right, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoy this. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next one. Bye, everybody.